Hello. 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 Actually, Hello. Can I ask, we can be starting on time, but I've just now got some curious questions before we begin. So I noticed some people were nice enough to retweet because I tweeted about my thing. Is anyone here that retweeted? I don't really use Twitter uh, too much, but uh, okay, well, so I would have done otherwise. I'm not sure that my people retweeted the one time. Okay, and then last year reference. Did anyone come to my talk then? I wasn't here yeah. last year. Oh. Sad, no repeat visitors. <laughs> and then the other thing was if anyone has actually been to South Africa. Yes. No. Uh, one person. Cool. 2005. When? With uh, Studiosus. Uh, it's a German uh, travel um, company that uh, it was very, very cool because the, the tour guide was also a friend of the, of the, um, this is a part that's been a, in the northern part of South Africa, mm. there is a little uh, a tribe with about one million uh, uh, members, I think. And he was uh, the, the friend of the king there. Ah. So he, he knew the bush uh, from uh, like okay, no, so more no other. Okay, so it's more Yeah, it was quite. It was more entertainment than uh, than just just a basic trip. And we made a trip from um, we started in Johannesburg. And followed the garden route, and we just did the Hippipolo, the Hansburg, we just did Soweto, yeah. then Hippipolo, uh, then um, not, not the Dragon's Plan, we took the, the outer route, the garden route. And then Port the Elizabeth, and, and we ended in um, uh, um, Cape of Couton, oh, yeah. or Cape of Storms. And uh, then we, uh, we stayed there, or in some places we stayed there for a few days. Cool, so you pretty much saw the whole place? Yeah, oh. and so uh, oh. and the, my favorite place was uh, the Blythe River Canyon. Okay, I haven't been there myself. <laughs> Alright, I was just curious because I mean I was at Lakeside Furs just over a month ago, and there they were, I mean it was a much smaller convention, so like 40 furs, and three of them had been to South Africa. So <laughs> I figured, you know, you're a friend, there must be a whole bunch. <laughs> but yeah, okay, let's get started. So, ZA Furries, history of the furry fandom in South Africa. And so I want to cover a couple of things here. So I'll give a brief overview of South Africa because I'm sure maybe there's many people here that don't know much about it. Then I'll go into how I found the fandom and then into the more community stuff. So founding the South African Furry Forum, how that's expanded and the community has grown and what we're doing now. So. Ah, yes. So I just want to also acknowledge the font that I use is Euroference by Incy. We founded um, Euroference and also founded Lakeside Furs, a really nice guy. And then all the pictures, although most of its photos are actually by South African artists, because Zen is South African. Oh, yeah. People didn't know. That's no, you I've seen the World Cup mascot, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a few moves that that's way back. That's cute. Yes. Okay. Except to music. So, let's see, South Africa, for those of you who don't know where it is, it's a problem. Yeah. Exactly, it's, easy. it's the easiest country in the world to find. You just need to know your compass directions and your continent. So, South Africa, here's Africa, that's South, there it is. <laughs> so, more specifically, this is how it's then broken up in terms of provinces and uh, all that there is Zimbabwe, which is where we've got our conservation group from, and our charity group. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, uh, it's an interesting place, very weird country, because, for example, in terms of official languages, most people are probably familiar with, you know, one and maybe a second one. South Africa's got 11 of them, so we, we sort of took these things to the extreme. And it's because it is a very diverse country in terms of both, you've got people from uh, basically Dutch ancestry, you've got people from more British ancestry, and then you've obviously got all the local people that were here already. So, when it comes to the most spoken first language, that's Zulu, but it's still only about 22% of the population that speak. Hmm. Are people trying to get that? Oh, do they? I think it doesn't open from the other side. Yeah, so. There's a lot of diversity there in terms of language, in terms of cultures, and everything else. We also sort of went a bit crazy with capital cities, 
I'm not sure if you know, most people again have one capital city. Technically ours is split into three. So we've got, I don't actually have a pointer, but... Uh, so in accounting, there's Pretoria, which most people know as sort of the capital, but it's technically the executive capital. So most of the government buildings are there, but not everything, because somewhere here, I think in the Free State, is Bloemfontein, which is the High Court, and so is the judicial capital of South Africa. And then down here, you get Cape Town, which is where you have Parliament, and so it's the legislative capital. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting sort of system there. The, yeah, I didn't think there was something else. Then it's also got a couple of bad points, okay? And you might actually have bad points as your main uh, view of South Africa. I mean, it had obviously apartheid recently. I mean, that's been done now for 21 years, 22 years, 22 years, I think. So before that, for example, there was, uh, black people were not allowed to vote. There was a lot of legal discrimination. There was where you were able to live and stuff was all determined by your race. So you went, yeah, people are already struggling to get in. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you, where you live was determined by race and all that. And although it's over, obviously you can't erase that immediately. So it has lingering effects. And one of the most notable comes, for example, in inequality. So this map just shows countries um, colored in according to the Guinea Index, which shows the difference between rich and poor. So the darker it is here, the more unequal the society is. So as you can see, Cape Town, well, not Cape Town, South Africa is pretty red. It's dark red. It's very unequal. The other thing that I always find interesting is, I mean, I'm sure everyone hears a bit about American politics because they have a big global influence, and they often talk about inequality in America, but as you can see, it's pretty much average in terms of the globe. And Europe's doing really well, so congratulations. For most of you are European. <laughs> and of course, inequality brings about all sorts of other problems in terms of crime, frustration, because things cannot always change as much. And this can lead to then sometimes violent riots. So these were both from earlier this year. And these are actually scenes at universities. So um, this one over here, I can't remember the details about the protest, but they were wound up burning art and stuff, which isn't really replaceable, and I don't think that's a good way to conduct yourself. What's most depressing to me about that is that was actually my university, and I thought they were a bit above that. Apparently I was wrong. And the other picture is what remains basically of a science lab at a university in the northern part of the country, which basically the entire building got burnt down in terms of some sort of protest. And of course this doesn't really help inequality because if you complain, you know, there's no education and then your protest is to burn down the educational facilities, you spend more money rebuilding what you had than building something new. And of course, many people live in, for example, these informal settlements, where basically people just are building with whatever they can find, you know, bits of wood, bit of metal. Uh, this is near Cape Town, it's Kailicha, and it's quite large. And of course, that also, crime, gangs, drugs, they're all there. It's a problem. And there's also not really any sort of security. So sometimes you get uh, fires there and they just spread easily. It's hard to get people in there to put out fires. There's no fire resistant material or anything like that. But it's also good. So in this case, we've got four Nobel Peace Prize winners. So uh, starting from the right is Albert Natuli, Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela, who I'm sure everyone's heard of, and uh, is P.W. Wilter, no? Yes? No, F.W. De Klerk. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Yes, don't want to confuse them. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've got some good people. Uh, in this case, we've also got people that have, are currently doing really good things in terms of uh, technology and entertainment. So, again, at the top left, we've got Neil Blomkamp, who people might remember he's done uh, Chappie, District 9, Elysium, and he's supposed to also direct the new Aliens movie, or one of the new aliens we've I think they're waiting to see how the next one does, whether the project continues or not. Um, then it's Elon Musk, who uh, founded, of course, SpaceX, Tesla, all that, South African. 
He did run away to Canada so that he could then more easily get to the US, but it's still South African. Um, Mark Shuttleworth, who founded one of the companies that was then integrated into PayPal. He also uh, founded, no, no, that was, sorry, sorry. That was Musk did the PayPal thing. Uh, Shuttleworth did Thought, which was for one of these uh, security certificates, and then was bought by VeriSign, which made him a lot of money, and then he was the first African into space, and I think the second self-funded space traveler. And now he's also running Canonical, which distributes Ubuntu, the uh, Linux distribution. And uh, then we've got Charlize Theron, who was recently in Mad Max Fury Road, as Furiosa, and she also won an Oscar for Monster. I haven't seen the movie, but presumably she did pretty well in that. And then at the bottom, people might know Trevor Noah, so he's more recently broken onto the worldwide scene because he's uh, taken over The Daily Show in the US after Jon Stewart left, which not everyone's happy about, but yeah, I don't know. And then for the furries, we've also got the big five. Yay. So, <laughs> yeah, lion, elephant, leopard, rhino, buffalo. It's there, so you can still obviously go to South Africa and you can see all the large animals because Europe pretty much killed most of their large mammals. I mean, there's a couple coming back now, but we still got a lot of them, which is nice. And some places are really beautiful. So this is Cape Town, where I'm actually from. You can't see the part where I live, it would be on the other side of the mountain. But, yeah. So if you ever visit um, South Africa, I would say go to Cape Town. It's not that much of a town, it's more of a city. Well, yes it is. It's, I can't remember if it's like two or three million people. It's, it's quite large, yes. But the name is Cape Town, so <laughs> let's, let's not get too picky about that. It's worse. It, it was at some point, yes. In a group. <laughs> at some point it was just, you know, a couple of people living there. It's like the same city. It was a town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, really nice place. So, that's where I started and then found the furry fan. So how did that actually happen? Well, I originally started writing fanfiction on fanfiction.net, which I think is not as great now as it used to be. But at that point I was writing all sorts of things about anime, about you know games, book series, all the stuff, which led me into writing Pokemon. Yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> Pokemon. And uh, let's be honest, it also led me into writing Pokemon porn. Oh. <laughs> Some oh. people I know have enjoyed my writing, <laughs> which then led me to AGNPH, which unless you're a Pokemon porn fan, you probably wouldn't know, but it was quite big a couple of years back. Uh, it came from the news group alt.games.nintendo.pokemon.hentai. So it was, <laughs> it was an archive basically of all the Pokemon porn you could find. But while I was on there, uh, one person in a signature had a link to another site, which was Yifstar. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, it, porn got me into furry, I know, it's, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But of course Yifstar is now so furry, joined so furry, it's a good sign. Um, yeah, which introduced me then to the whole furry thing. So I didn't join immediately, I basically browsed a bit, and eventually it got me a little more interested, and I got into that, got into the whole furry thing. And roughly at the same time, more starting with the fan fiction, was this you won't know, but mix it. So this was a chat program, a South African chat program, which is still going. And it was quite nice because, sort of like WhatsApp and Telegram, it allowed you to send messages uh, using the data service, and you wouldn't have to spend a whole bunch of money. I'm not actually sure why it didn't grow as big as it could have, because I mean, it's essentially the same thing as WhatsApp and Telegram. It's all based on your phone numbers, all data transfer. Only this happened before smartphones. It was when you were still using WAP and stuff on your phone. It was a totally separate internet. So that was quite good. And then combining those led me to things like MSN, uh, ICQ, and Yahoo. Mm -hmm. I'm still actually using Yahoo, just not as much as I used to. Still going. Yeah, yeah, it's still going. I mean, MSN then is no longer around. Yeah, it's become a link now. Hmm? Link. Link? No, no, because Microsoft then died. bought Skype. Oh, yeah, I yeah, know yeah, I missed a messenger, but it became... Uh, now, I remember it changed to Skype and then I stopped using oh, Skype. Skype. Yeah, and then 
ICQ I was using until recently when they, I don't know, for some reason I kept getting error messages and they wanted my phone number and I said, well, nobody uses you anyway, so why would I give you more things? So I, I, I moved on from that. But this introduced me then to obviously the furry fandom. I had these instant messages, I started talking to people, and that's great. I mean, I'm sure you all talk to international furs, but sometimes you want to talk to people that, you know, are from around you, maybe you want to be able to actually meet with furs, and, you know, people that share the same sort of backgrounds and know what you're going through. So, there was a problem. There wasn't really a South African furry community. I mean, I know because I looked. I spent a lot of time Googling and trying to find, are there South African furs? Where are they? And I was adding them onto these messengers, but it was very few. I mean, at one point I thought there was a total of maybe 20 furs in South Africa. It's a lot more now, so that's good. But during this time, I then met Kata. So uh, we've sort of fallen out of contact and stuff. But we were then talking about trying to get the South African community started. And what I wanted at that point, because I was into the whole instant messenger thing, was to just sort of have like a yellow pages where you had each fur's name and their contact details, and you could find, ah, here the South African furs, and just sort of meet up with people on your own. Kaiser then favored um, starting actually a forum. I didn't have much experience in the forum at that time. And due to sort of relationship dynamics, we wound up compromising and getting a forum. But that did not actually work so well. We had all sorts of problems, especially with bots and stuff. And basically a month after that forum started, it sort of collapsed. And that was very sad. But I also met then another fur who put me in touch with Anoya Mouse, who had a sort of ZA fur blog, which was trying to tell people what was going on, mostly in the Johannesburg community. But there wasn't really much going on at the time. <laughs> what we did then was we merged the two, so the blog and the forum idea, we put them together and got a new forum, which was then the ZA Fur Forum, which was a lot more successful. That was in 2008, and we still got it going. We've only had, we changed the theme once because there was a forum upgrade which broke our old theme. That was kind of sad. But we now had a site and we could bring people together. Because if you Google South African furries, this comes up. And it makes it a lot easier then to find. So people would see the, the site, they would join. And they would meet the other South African furries. <coughs> and, well, what we did was we grew. So at the end of 2008, um, we started in April, or was released to the public in April, we had 43 firms. And from, it was a couple of weeks ago when I made this graph, the end of 2016, we now had 519 accounts on the forum. I mean, that's not a perfect representation of how many furs there are in South Africa, because, I mean, there are a couple of uh, disactivated accounts, there might be some duplicate accounts, and there's some foreign furs that have also dropped. I mean, it was actually, earlier today I met a German fur who had joined the forum, and he was happening in Berlin for the day. So, that was quite nice. And yes, there's also drama. Furries love drama. <laughs> yeah, you all know the sort of thing I'm talking about. But I, I like to think that we, we sort of get through it, and there's still a community there. And we want other things. I mean, we've been wanting to have not just a forum, but a whole site for the South African community that has all sorts of things. So you can have a map to find other furs that live near you. You can have personalized galleries to upload your art. We've got an IRC chat room that's been going basically since before the forum. And what we wanted was also to have that with an integrated client on the site. I mean, at the moment, we've got a map and we've got the IRC chat room, but they're all separate. We haven't yet got the integration going, although we are working on that. Slowly. So, okay, so we've got the growth and success. And yes, one of the things that's quite interesting is population demographics. So. The South African furry fandom is quite similar to the furry fandom as a whole. I mean, it's quite young, it's generally people that have at least some university education, and it's also quite white, which is interesting, because this is the data from the South African census in 2011, and you can see whites there is a very small part of the population. I think it winds up about 8%. But we've done questions on race on the forum, there was one that was running for a couple of years, and there's been a more recent one. And if you look at those results, overwhelmingly the furs are white. In fact, there's 
according to this one in 2016, there are apparently two of Asian descent, and there were a couple from, I mean, one saying African, and this, uh, this one which had been going from 2009 to 2013. So, I just find that a bit strange. It's, there, there are, of course, all sorts of reasons this could be. I mean, like I talked about the income, income inequality, if you don't have, I mean, if you're living in, for example, the shacks in Kailicha, then you don't have internet access, you don't have money or time to actually start worrying about the furry fandom. It's only once you have a certain, yeah, a certain security in your situation that you can actually worry about this sort of thing. Which is, yeah, I mean, there's a growing black middle class and stuff, so maybe we'll start seeing photos of color, but we'll have to see what happens in the future. What's also really nice about having this forum is it's not just that you've got like another furry site. It's not like another FA, another Ink Bunny, another Soap Furry. It's a community site, which means you get a very different response. So, for example, people are meeting up in here and they're finding, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends. Well, I'm not sure actually anyone found girlfriends because it's also skewed very male. I mean, looking at this room as well, it's not an even breakdown. Um, but yes, you find people meeting their lives, people just enjoying meeting new people. Because, I mean, I'm sure you've all experienced hanging out with other people and hanging out with furs. At least for me, it's a lot more comfortable hanging out around other furs. I don't know if you agree or not. Yes. No, no response. Say again, sorry? And that it's more comfortable hanging out with furs sometimes than other people, let's say, friends that you meet outside of the furry yeah, 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 true, true. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's very, very <laughs> comfortable. Yeah, people are a lot more open and they're more understanding. But there's also people that they've obviously had some rough times in their life and their life improves. I mean, here he says, every single aspect of my life improved and he discovered his true self. So, to get the sort of community, you really help people in terms of how they live as well in coming to terms with themselves. And, I mean, this one's not so much just about here, but it, someone was talking about American forums which were not apparently as friendly. They were either too big or no one was actually using them. So, I think we're at the moment at a a nice size, we've got a fairly active community. Not everyone is obviously active, but that's the case for all sites, all forums. And the community has spread beyond just the forum. So we have a Steam group, we have a DeviantArt group, we've got Facebook groups, we've got FA groups. That stuff's all there. And we even start to sort of influence the outside community. So there happens to be an Ink Bunny server just for South Africa. Well, Southern Africa, but I'm not actually aware of too many African furs that are not South African furs. So that was quite nice. I mean, that was partly my responsibility, not responsibility, it was partly due to me. I heard that because uh, Green Reaper, if you don't know, runs Ink Bunny, but he also runs other projects, so Wikifur and Flera. And since 2010, I think, I've also been writing but on Flera which put me in touch with Green Reaper and reminded him that there are other furs elsewhere in the world, like South Africa. So we got ourselves a server, which is nice. I mean, there are ones all over, oh, thank you. Um, but I mean, there are ones all over, I think, Bad Dragon's actually sponsoring uh, Cash in North America, which also speeds up data transfer. So we've got the commu community going, and then what you want to do is you want to actually meet people. So we had a couple of fur meets and things, and we wanted to then bring together the entire community, you know, from all around the country. And we tried this 2008 in Cape Town, which was organized by Dracius and Griffin Wolf. Incidentally, Dracius was the first fur I actually met in person. And we had 16 attendees, which is not much, it doesn't sound that much. But if you remember, at the end of 2008, we also only had, I think, 40-something furs that were known about in the entire country. So it's almost half of the furs that were there. And Eurofurance itself, I believe the first one had 19 people. So we weren't that far off from Eurofurance, and we've all seen how that's grown. <laughs> um, this was actually the shirt I was wearing there, I then got everyone to sign it, which was quite nice. Oh, yeah, uh, sort of unique thing. No one else had that because I didn't see anyone else getting shirts signed. So that was the first time. Uh, we also had I think that's an anarch there. The, the names, by the way, on the photos are whoever took the photo, not necessarily who's in the photo. 
but he had his tail. We had all the same sort of things. We had fursuits, not very good ones. Uh, that's okay. In fact, the tiger was sort of in progress, so the stripes were only held on at the ends, so it was quite loose. <laughs> but yeah, we, we all got together in a guest house. We went out and saw parts of Cape Town. We also hung out in the house, played Guitar Hero, for example, that was projected on the wall. Yeah, it, it was good. I mean, this, I, both suits there, I believe, were made by Electrocat, who I think they made the first fursuits in South Africa. So, congratulations to her. She's also doing a lot of art, but I mean, I'll, I'll mention her again later. Twice later. Because then we ran into some of the problems that we had. So, furries in general, and South Africa is not an exception, are very young. So, I know uh, Tarkin was saying he's got this problem most of the furs in Turkey being under 18. Hmm. We've got the same thing, but you're young, let's say you're studying, you don't have money. So you can't travel around the country to, uh, yeah, basically you can't travel around the country. And South Africa is quite a large country, and people are split into, often the major cities, but sometimes you get isolated furs in the countryside. But for example, to fly, I mean, I've now been staying in Vienna, to fly from Vienna to Berlin, from one country to another, took, you know, I think it's an hour, somewhere around an hour, basically, for that flight. To fly from Cape Town to Johannesburg is a two hour flight, and that's within one country. So, it, getting around costs money, furs don't have that money, which makes it difficult to bring people together for a convention. So our solution was to try rotate it. So we wanted to go between Cape Town and Johannesburg, because Johannesburg and Pretoria are right next to each other, they're large cities, and Cape Town's also a large city, we've got most of the furs there. And then Port Elizabeth, which is not as big of a city, but there was a fairly active furry population there. So that was the reasoning behind that. So 2009, we wanted to go to Johannesburg. That did not happen. I can't remember the exact reasons, but the organization unfortunately fell through. But 2010, we were able to go to Port Elizabeth and we had the second South Africa convention. And that was organized mostly by Nanook and then he was joined by Electrocat and Cat147. And there, the attendees basically varied throughout the... It was a week long, basically, and it was between 14 to 16 people because there were some that weren't there all the time that were living in Port Elizabeth, and so they would obviously pop in one or two days. And again, it was really good. We hung out... Uh, it was actually hosted at Nanook's grand's house, which was really nice of her to let us stay there. Um, <laughs> We went, you know, to the aquariums, to reptile parks, to the museum, we just did some other things, it's game drives. I mean, you can see there where people were sleeping on couches. I think there were three of them in that room. There was, you know, I was sharing the room then with Nano. There was another two people, I think, in the guest bedroom, another three on mattresses in some other room. Hmm. And I know that doesn't add up, so there were probably people elsewhere that I forgot about. But, and Electric Cat had actually been working more on fursuits, so they're a lot nicer than the ones that we had in 2008. Mm. And I can show you some videos actually from there. Oh, cool. uh, this should be here. So we've got. So this. Okay, I don't know why it sounds okay. It's not too important. But we went here, we wandered around this shopping center, and we were able to dance. Some guy was able to play some music for us. <laughs> it was nice. It was just so good then. It, it was a good time, you know. It, it was the first time I'd ever gone out uh, first in public. They, they offered to let me try one, but it doesn't fit so well the head of the glasses. Yeah. Who's so, the uh, the African wild dog on the right with the beans? Uh, that one was actually uh, Electra Cat. She was on there. And then it was uh, Sticky Fingers. Let, let me bring them in. Uh, uh, yeah, so Electric Cat was in the Wild Dog. Uh, this was Zillion, was in the sort of, sort of like trailer trash wolf dog thing. And then the bear had sticky fingers. No butter fingers. Hmm? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was uh, interesting for me, which I didn't see, I mean, I've now gone out a couple of times in Europe uh, with these fursuit walks, was 
some of the children seemed a bit scared. Like half of them enjoyed what was happening. <laughs> half loved the pursuits. That was amazing. Another half burst into tears. And there was this kid. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's not uploaded anywhere. There's basically, this, I think, like the, well, apart from the lakeside place where I practiced this. I, they're just resting. It was hot. I mean, when South Africa was in the summer. I mean, we did this in early January because, yeah, he goes, he's with his family. But eventually, he gets to a point where it's like, I'm not going any closer. No matter what. I'm stopping. The family can go, but I'm not going with them. And it is, it is so strange. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't quite know what, what the problem is, because I haven't seen that sort of reaction so much in, the, in Europe. Everyone, most of the kids seemed really happy. I didn't, I saw once like a child scream because of a person, which was hilarious, I must say. But there, there was a much more variation in the reaction. So, this is, uh, what year is it, 2010? Uh, yes, 2010. It's really oh, awesome. months, that's the end. Actually, you have these reactions in uh, like German kids. Do you? Especially at this age, they, when they are too small to understand what's what's even happening, they are not scared. Oh. And there's an, an age where I, it's been two years to four mm. years, oh, five oh. years, where they are scared yeah. because big hats and they've never seen it. Yeah, I remember when they get bigger, they understand and they are happy. Yeah, they oh. said because someone told me they were. I, th I think there, there was a bunch of over saying hi to some kids, and this kid came, and then when they stood up, the kid just like, yeah, <laughs> he couldn't take it anymore, he just, <laughs> it was too much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I found that strange, I didn't see it so much here, but apparently it does also happen. Poor little child. I like how they uh, try to encourage him. <laughs> you know, like, he, he's not having it. No. But he could wave, so, can't be that bad. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so there's some kids that are happy with this. That's cool. Got some fans there. Yeah, then 2011 we wanted to move to Cape Town. I was going to try organize that. Organizing, organizing prairie conventions is very difficult. It is. We did not have one in Cape Town. Um, the problem that I, because I at least know what the problems were there, was without having a location, we can't give, for example, a fixed date when we're going to have a convention, but you can't, you know, give a fixed date and book a hotel or a guest house or anything like that without putting down a deposit. I didn't have money, no one's going to give me money before I can give them a date, so we had this problem, no venue, no date, no date, no money, no money, no venue. Mm. It, it was a problem. I mean, this led to a rather long hiatus, so those were the only two South Africa conventions that we were able to hold. And I think, for example, the 2010 one, the only reason we managed to get it was because we were staying at Nanox Grand's place. So we had, that was already sorted, we had a location. Ivan Wolf has actually been working to revive the convention. He hoped to do it this year. That fell through, but they're really working on it now for next year. They've got a website up, so that'll be held in Bloemfontein, I believe, at, on one of the university campuses when the university's away. They obviously dormitories and stuff are available. So if you're interested in going, look it up, South Africa. Um, there's also a link actually, I've retweeted it, if you find my Twitter. Hopefully that will happen. I'm pretty confident. I think he's, he's got a good team and he's been working through all these things. The other thing, also one of Ivex projects, is South Africa for the podcast. So this was started, I think it was a bit over a year ago. And he's been doing a weekly podcast hosted, well, him and Scratch mostly. Uh, that's supposed to be pronounced Enapa. He used to be called Accretion, but apparently that's some Egyptian name. He decided it would be nice. Uh, but he's not involved so much now. But they have been interviewing all sorts of furs, sometimes South African furs, sometimes international ones. I helped secure some of the guests. But I mean, they've had Unsi on, they've had Tumul, they've had Uncle Kage, they've had Rukus. All sorts of fancy furs. I've been on there twice, so we know it's good. <laughs> yeah, and that's generally streamed through First Stream. Basically, every Sunday, I think about seven o'clock, 
I mean, it depends on time zones. So I think it's about seven at the moment. And it's also now being picked up by Furry FM, who are also streaming it live. So that's, you know, to the... Furry FM is a German furry radio station. I think it was... I think it's run by Bravura in Switzerland. So and they, they had it... I think yesterday they were doing a live broadcast from here. I actually completely forgot about that. I was busy with other things. So that's the problem, you know. Europrints are so big, there's always too many things happening. But yeah, so there's a podcast. So we're, we're breaking out. We've got sort of influence. We're talking to other people. Fursuiting is getting bigger now. I mean, you remember there were some not so great fursuits. People are getting good at it now. They, they really are. And there's more people that have fursuits. Um, this one, for example, is Valerian, one of the other admins on the forum. He actually is one that imported it from, I think, the US. Well, I'm not sure he's actually imported it yet. It's quite expensive. The other ones, I think, were all made in South Africa by the furs themselves, which is great. Some of them are actually talking about starting to try sell fursuit pieces, about working together to get stuff going. Because one of the biggest problems that I understand them having is a lack of good quality fur, or fake fur, I should say. There's, it's just not really available, and importing things is hugely expensive. So, that's sort of the, the major issue. But I mean, it's happening, it's good. So yeah, so then what I want to just mention as well is notable furs that maybe you might want to look up, because they do some cool things. Ivikov, of course, I've mentioned a few times, he's getting the convention going, he's been running this podcast, He's also involved on the forum, so really great guy. He's really friendly and stuff. I met him, he used to live in Cape Town, he's now moved up to Johannesburg. Contrast is an author, he actually has a published novel, but under his real name, which he doesn't want to mix with furry things, so I'd actually have to look it up anyway myself. But he's writing uh, Under, which is his sort of furry novel. It's on, I think, Fur Affinity, DeviantArt, so furry really long. I haven't read it, but I understand it's quite good. Ubuntu was in the uh, US for a while, he's back in South Africa. He's got published books, so if you look him up, you can find his books, They Are Furry. It was something about, something in the savannah, lions and cheetahs, all those things that you might want to read about. We also have some good artists, so Electric Cat and Nanook, they're both still doing art, they do commissions. Nanook has improved so much since 2008. I once posted one of his old pictures that he gave me at the, the first South Africa meet, and people were like, wow, you, you, you were so bad then. So, <laughs> and the electric cat. <laughs> He's good now, it's okay if I say it. <laughs> electric cat's good, and of course there's Zen, probably the most famous South African fur, although he's not really involved with the community anymore. But he sometimes comes back, because uh, I think his parents are still in South Africa. So yes, those are the first. And so by then, the final message, basically, I mean, I told you a lot about like, how I found the fandom, how we started up the community, how it's expanded, I mean, we've got international links now, and so, I'm not sure if anyone watches Doctor Who. Yeah. A couple, so you recognize this? Thing? Yes, but yeah. from Professor Yana. Um, yeah, yeah. There was, you are not alone, there was... <laughs> <laughs> yes, so there was another time law. And so, the thing here is, you are not alone. It applies in so many ways. If you're, let's say, US and European furs, you might think, okay, there's no furs anywhere else. There are, there are furs. There must be some furs elsewhere in Africa, but South Africa, we exist, we're there. Furs that are, example, think you're the only one in your country. I mean, I understand there are many countries, even in uh, Europe, apparently, where the fandom is only just starting out. If you put things together, you will find other furs. You are not alone that way. There's probably not too many South African furs that are reading this, but I've seen so many people that have found the forum and said, I thought I was the only one, then I found this, and suddenly there were hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. So again, if you look, you're not alone, there are definitely other furs out there. And so, yes, that's my main message, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. Where should I visit South Africa?
Way should be visible. Yeah, Cape Town. Cape Town. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I actually haven't traveled around South Africa that much. So most of the times we did travel was either to see my father's family, which was sort of out in the country, or my mother really wanted to go on the game drives and safaris and stuff. I must say, I actually got bored of that, so I don't do it anymore. I mean, we went once to Kruger, which is great because you can see all the big animals there, you know, the big five. But it, they love it, they take all the photographs of all the animals, the rest of my family. To me, it was a lot of seeing the same thing. You know, you, you drive, it's like, ah, oh, here's a herd of buck, that's great. You see the same, a herd of the same species, you know, 30 minutes later, then two hours later, then it gets old, for me anyway. Some people seem to like it. So I, I actually, on that trip, I was sort of reading a book on the back seat until they told me, oh, there's something cool, like there's a leopard there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to look at that, definitely, because that's not something you see all the time. But, I mean, there are other things. I mean, I don't know too much of what's in Johannesburg. To me, it sounds like a crime-ridden, dirty place. I wouldn't want to go there. It's probably not quite the truth. But, yeah, but, but there's all sorts of historical places. There's... I mean, it depends, obviously, what sort of things you want. If you're looking for culture, history, you want to see wildlife. Might have Yeah, well, you know, there's... I don't, I don't think it's in South Africa. I think in Namibia, just above South Africa, basically, they, I think they've got the, one of the salt lakes there, which is so flat, and they do all the, those Guinness speed records for land speed records. They do it there. So maybe you can even visit that. I mean, it's nearby. I, who was that? I was talking to someone that was going to go to Namibia. Because they were, I think, working with some cheetah conservation. They're obviously not here, otherwise I'm sure they would have said something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Is it quite hot? Yes. What Sorry. is the general public reaction to furries in South Africa? There actually hasn't been too much of a public reaction that I'm aware of. Because, I mean, we, for example, did that first using, everyone seemed happy with it. Um, I'm not sure, I know in Johannesburg they're now, it's a lot more active and I think they go out occasionally. I know people going to like these uh, anime and gaming conventions and stuff like that. I haven't heard of any negative things, it doesn't really appear in the news much. I mean there was at one point we were wondering if the forum should make a reply because somebody did write a piece on furries that was published in a, a fairly well known newspaper there that it again emphasized the sexual aspect and sort of made it as that that was the only aspect, which it's not. Even, yeah. even if you find your way there through porn, it's not the only thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that, but in general, there's not been too much. So, I mean, I know furs often have this idea that, you know, the public reaction is all negative, but I think we're obviously hyper aware of anything about the fandom. So when there is some sort of negative reaction, all the first hear about it, and it stays in our mind. But I think with a lot of the public, if so, there's something about furries, it's you know, ah, oh, look at that. Maybe maybe they maybe they're bad people. Say, ah, oh, look at those freaks there, or something weird. But I think you know, within a week, they forget about it. You know, a year later, they have no memory. So I don't think we have to worry too much about that. I think you can still make first impressions and stuff. Yes. Yes. And so I think that. Um the reason why there is so much uh, negative um, well, stuff by talking is I think that people who don't really care or just take it as it is don't talk much about it. Yeah. So we will never know. It's, it's, it's true. It's like, I mean, I wound up writing and I did a bit of drawing, but I'm sure if there's any artists or writers, you see, you don't get you know, feedback from people that are just like, oh, that's okay. You either get people that, I loved it, you know, so I mean, if you look at like star ratings, you get five stars, or you get one stars from people that hate it, usually because you put something in that they don't like, and they don't just not read it. So, I think it's the same. I mean, most people, even if they hear about this, they're not going to care, they're not going to pay any attention. You're only going to hear either people love it, which is, I mean, if they loved it, then they would be first. So, you only then hear about people that really hate it. Is probably true. Yeah. But uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, um, public um, perceptions of furries. You know, I I was my previous job, and uh, when I mentioned the furry fandom to uh, this person, immediately the person says, 
oh, you guys like all this uh, porn and sexual stuff. And I'm thinking, no, not all furries are like this. <laughs> uh, but it's not the true theme of the fandom. The fandom is about our love for anthropomorphic animals that we know and love today due to copy cartoons or storybooks or whatever yeah. it may be. So we, we need to be more education to these people. Um, because they just ignorant because they just don't understand that it's not only the the naughty side of the band that's prevalent in our yeah. kingdom. So yeah. I, I must say well like I have talked about furry to a few people. I mean now I wear I like at work I wear furry shirts and stuff and there are a couple of people there that know I'm a fur. Um, but I have not really had anyone with those sort of reactions. Most people haven't known anything about the fandom. And I did once we had to, I was doing my honours degree, which I don't think many European places have. I think the UK might still have it. I don't know. Yeah, I've got honours degree. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I was doing an honours degree there, and at one point we were doing a presentation practice thing, so it was five minutes. I decided to do it on very fandom. And as far as I know, most people in the class didn't know what I was talking about. There was one guy who came up afterwards and was like, I was wondering if I should ask you about Yip, you know. So oh, he, oh, <laughs> no. Luckily he didn't, he didn't oh. ask about Yip, and I left it up completely. Oh. It's not something I really would want to have in the discussion when I'm introducing it. But oh. <laughs> yeah, so some people, some people are aware, but I think most aren't. And I think it's easy to change, because those people have probably heard something, but presumably I would like to think it's a smart person and then they know, okay, you hear something that doesn't necessarily mean it's true, you need more information. Mm. Yes. Yes, yes um, one other question. How is uh, all the social part between the first? Here in Europe, they are pretty open, like, hey, I'm gay, hey. And um, for a few days, I was in Asia, Zika, about Asian first, and they were, we don't talk about that stuff. How is it in South no, Africa? Again, it's, it's quite open there. So there's, I think it's still the, I'm sure it's the majority, but many people are gay or bi in the South African fandom. And we haven't had in terms that sort of social divide or anything in terms of sexual orientation. I mean, I think there's also one fur on the forum who's having problems because he's, uh, he's transsexual. So he doesn't get any sort of support from his family, but of course, the furry community is pretty much, it doesn't matter. Sort of so I think it's for him or him or her. Wants to be heard. But e either way, it, it's a nice sort of like safe space because I think you can discuss all those things. It's not a problem. In terms of like society in South Africa, it's technically it's not a problem. So South Africa actually did quite well legally. So gay marriage is completely equal to straight marriage and it has been since I think 2006. We were basically fourth country in the world to legalize gay marriage. So that's good. We're beating some European countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the negative side, there's not always society. South African society doesn't always agree with that, especially obviously the poorer, less educated sections. So, yeah, in, in terms of if you have a problem with maybe people learning, okay, furry is maybe a lot of gay, a lot of bisexual sort of thing. It could maybe cause some social tensions that way between furry and non furry but it's not so much in, for example, the sort of circles that most girls will be moving around in. So, I mean, I believe Cape Town is supposed to be some sort of gay capital as well. It's got a lot of gay stuff. We've got pride marches, all that happens. It's, so that's, it's not, a, it's not a huge issue. I mean, unless you, let's say, go out to the country or something like that, because then, then it can be an issue. Yeah. It's quite religious out there. So, so you were saying about the sexuality of things and so forth. Um, but the thing is, not only, I don't know what about in South Africa, but in most of you in the West and so forth. Um, it's like, uh, oh, of course there are um, straight people in our family. And yeah. uh, the straight people, uh, I don't know about others or me, but um, other people feel that, ah, uh, oh, uh, yeah, so uh, they feel that um, they're getting, um, they're feeling they're alone in a family. Because, uh, because obviously you have to, you know, the other others. Um... I'm not sure it's quite like it. I mean, I know there are a couple of straight pros that then sort of joke about not being able to find anyone because there's, as you know, not that many female pros either. And so uh, it can be tough that way to find people. But I don't, at least I haven't got the feeling that there's that much about, oh, I'm so alone. Mm. Um, it's more, I think, 
done in sort of a jokey way. But. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just think maybe it's the motor for his Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Yes. Are there any female fairies in South Africa? Yes, there are. So, Electro is female. Cap, well, from. Let me just bring this back up. It's nice to look at that blank screen or login screen. Or, let's see. So, if I go back to. For example, Electro Cats. Well, this is a terrible laptop. I got it actually from Dracius, but it's years and years old, completely outdated. So, Electric Cat's female, there's Leeward, there's Siren, there's um, Raven Songs, female South African, she's in the UK at the moment, I think in London. Mm -hmm. There are female ones, so they're around, not in the majority, it's still very much male, but there are there. Is there no in the UK? I think he is. he? Is he also in the UK? Yeah, yeah, he's in the UK now. I, I'm not actually having any contact. I know, I know a South African fairy who lives in the UK. Uh -huh. His name is uh, Zami. I don't know if you know him. No. I have heard, I know there's some furs that left and have been elsewhere. So when I was at Lakeside Furs, uh, one of the guys that I was talking to, his boyfriend, who's now living in Canada, well, they both live in Canada, he's South African and he left, I think it was 2004 or whatever, which was, oh. it was before we had, for example, the South African furry community. So I think there's many that maybe have left before we established stuff and they don't necessarily know there's still a South African community or they've sort of, you know, immigrated out and they no longer uh, necessarily want to be part of the South African community because they're now got their own community wherever they're living now. Mm. But I mean, th those sort of things, whether people want to go back or not, it's going to be, of course, personal to them. I mean, it would be nice if even the people that have left still keep some sort of link because it's just a nice thing to have. Um, but yeah. Yes. Uh, what's, the, <laughs> what's the job distribution among uh, South African tours? Like, uh, is it dominant in IT sphere? There's still a lot of IT people. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure offhand, but a lot of the guys have some sort of involvement in IT. Yes, okay. There's still, let me see, Electro Cat and Nanook, for example, I think are now living off their art. So there's a couple that are doing that sort of thing. Contrast is, of course, writing for a living. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a couple involved in other things as well, but it, it, IT is, again, a large part, and many firms are, of course, interested in that. But I mean, again, like, like I said, the South African. Breakdown, the breakdown of South African queries is quite similar then to the international ones in terms of like education, age, all, all those sort of things. It's, it's freaky in a way. <laughs> but, yeah. Is the forum kind of running itself or does it need a lot of attention? Ah, uh, yes. So, not actually that much attention. So, I don't know, maybe it's different than bigger sites, obviously, but for the forum, it's now. Most times it's smooth and you don't need to worry about it, then you get periods where drama flares up and then everything's stressful. But, so it's sort of like calm, burst of activity, calm, burst of activity. Which is, it, it can be frustrating because you never know when something's going to happen. Yeah. And you've got to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Right. I think so.